Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So uh, today, I kind of want to go over what you get when you buy a Carfax. So, you know, I recently just bought this Roush Mustang. Love this car. Beautiful car. Love it more every time I drive it. Um, I don't drive it a lot, but I do love it more every time I drive it. <clears throat> but when I'm buying a vehicle, I kind of want to know the history of it. So, you know, I asked the guy, and I, the people seem very trusting. I mean, they really did. They seem very trustworthy, but it's nothing like having something in your hand. Um, just peace of mind. Uh, and thought I'd buy a Carfax. So I bought a Carfax. How much does it cost? It is outrageous. For a peace of mind, it's expensive. I ain't gonna lie. Um, it was $39.99 for a one-time Carfax. Now they do have different tiers. You can buy like three or something like that, or you can buy like a year subscription or something. But uh, <clears throat> I didn't need all that. That would go to waste because I think if you buy like a three pack or something like that, you still only have a year to use it. So I thought, I don't need a three pack. I just need one. And you can see right here, $39.99. That's expensive for what, four pieces of paper? But <clears throat> nothing is too expensive for peace of mind. So let's go over what this actually tells you. In case you've never bought a Carfax, don't know what you get with it, is it worth you buying, um, those kind of things like that. So at the top, it tells you the vehicle information, um, VIN number, engine, gasoline, rear wheel drive, you know, stuff like that, just your normal stuff. Now I'm not gonna show you this because it has the VIN number on it. <clears throat> Next, over here on this side, it will tell you whether or not there has been any accidents. It says no accidents reported, uh, no damage reported. It does state that it's a one owner, so it will tell that. Uh, it does tell you the service history records, which it does show six service histories for this car. The car only has a little over 23,000 miles on it now, like 23,100 and some. So the reason it does have six service history records is because if a car sits too long, the viscosity of the oil breaks down and you still need to change your oil, which they told me I should probably change my oil now. It doesn't have that many miles on it, but just because it'd been sitting so long that I should probably change it. And I hope to do that one day this week, but it does have six service history records. It is a personal vehicle and the last reported odometer reading was 22,107 miles, which was probably the last time it got serviced. And when I bought it, it had like 22.9. So it had 800 more miles on it than when the last time I'd serviced it. So if you go on down, it does tell you the year it was purchased. <clears throat> so let me fold this over. We're in this little box here. Um, it will tell you the year it's purchased, which was 07. It'll tell you the type of ownership, which was a personal vehicle. I'm assuming maybe if it's a fleet vehicle or something, it would tell you that there. Estimated length of ownership was 11 years and seven months. They kept, they was one owner. They kept this car the whole time. Um, owned in the following states. The only state it was ever owned in was my state. It was fairly local to me. It was about an hour away. Beats going after that 350 I was looking at in Alabama that was five hours away. Estimated miles driven per year were 2,156 miles. Not a lot. And like I said, the last uh, reported odometer reading was 22,107. So that's in the next box. In the very next box after that, it tells you whether it's a salvage car, junk, rebuilt, flood, you know, hail or lemon or anything like that. Uh, it was guaranteed no problem. And then not the actual mileage or exceeds mechanical limits. They guaranteed that this was the actual mileage and did not exceed the limit. So on down, it talks about was it a total loss or did it have any structural damage um, down here in this bottom box. And it also guarantees that there was no issues on either of those, which was really what I was more concerned about. Like I said, I trusted the guy, but I didn't know him. He didn't know me. Uh, you know, right out of the box, we seemed to get along. And, you know, he was upstanding guy, but at the time, neither one of us knew each other. <clears throat> so next on this list, it talks about airbag deployment, which it did not uh, having airbags deployed. Of course, it wasn't an accident. How would airbags deployed? It does an odometer check, accident damage, manufacturer recall, and then the basic warranty. Um, 
all of that was no no recalls, no issues. And of course, it does say the warranty expired because it did. It's 12 years old. And then you get into like the meat and potatoes of the report. So as you get down into like this section here, it starts telling you a lot about the car and the history. So over here on the side, it does say low mileage. This owner drove less than the industry average of 15,000 miles per year. And so there is like a little note over here on the side that will tell you that. Then it comes in where it talks about like the vehicle was manufactured and shipped to the original dealer. And that happened on 323 of 2007. And then the vehicle was purchased, uh, reported by the first owner. And that was in 714. So, you know, it sat there a few months before anybody bought it, but a 40, you know, $3,500 car in 2007 is probably going to sit on the lot for a while before somebody purchases this car. I mean, that's just the way it is. Not everybody in 07 could go out and buy a $43,500 car. Not everybody in 2019 can go out and buy a $43,500 car. I mean, that's just the way it is. And that was expensive then. It's still expensive, but in 07, that was a lot of money. So it's natural that it would sit there for a while before it sold. Then it talks about, you know, registration was issued or renewed, and that's where they titled the car and uh, got their tags and stuff like that. <clears throat> and that's usually done by the dealer. So they put this on here and, you know, that wasn't done by the original purchaser. Uh, that's usually done by the dealer. So the dealer would have took approximately a little over a month, actually, to get them their tags. The drive-out tags only last a month, but it was actually, uh, the car was purchased in 714, and they did not get the tags from the dealer till 829. So it was a little past a month. So I bet they had to get another drive-out tag. Uh, let's see here. Uh, they had a bed liner installed. I don't know what a bed liner is, but I'm assuming it's some kind of mat in the trunk. Uh, so that was installed. That was all by the factory. Um, maintenance inspection, tie rotated was complete. Uh, then it tells you maintenance inspection, completed battery, uh, charging system checked, oil filter changed, uh, tires rotated, two wheel alignment performed, uh, brakes were checked and tires conditioned and pressure checked. So, I mean, it tells you all the stuff like that all the way down through here and tells you the mileage that each one of these were done. Now, that was in 09 that that happened. I don't know if they put tires on it and had a had an alignment done then. I wouldn't have thought so with 15,000 miles. I do know this car does not have the original tires, but I would assume that they changed the tires because the other ones got dry. I don't know if they cracked or dry rotted or what, but I would assume they changed the tires because of that. Probably not because they wore them out because this car was babied. You can tell that by driving it and just the condition it's in. Uh, then again, there again, maintenance and all that stuff. Registration issued or renewed. So that just tells you that, you know, um, they've renewed their, their tags. Uh, so here, maintenance inspection, registration renewed. There's another time they renewed their tags. And then on in the back, <clears throat> again, registration issued, renewed, registration issued, renewed, registration issued, renewed. Uh, so I think this last one was because uh, it was, I'm, I think the last one was because they paid off the loan. That's probably what that was. It was talking about a loan or lien reported. So I'm thinking that that was probably where they officially paid off the loan or they took out another small loan. Now they had the title in hand when I bought the car, so I didn't have to worry about that, but I'm sure that's what it is. And uh, down here at the bottom in the glossary section, it talks about the first owner. Uh, then it talks about a recall, but I did, this car does not have any recalls because it said over here on the other side, it didn't have any recalls. And then it talked a little bit about the ownership history. So should you do a Carfax when you're buying a car? For me, um, yes. It, like I said, it's a peace of mind. Um, I looked over the car. I could not tell anywhere where this car would have ever been damaged at all. But my wife's old Accord had $11,000, $12,000 worth of damage done to it. And you couldn't really tell it either. The only place on that car that even remotely looked like it had been wrecked was the bumper just bulged just a hair right in front of the, of the headlight. 
It may have been that way from the factory and I just didn't notice it because I was actually looking to see if I could tell um, after we got it back. But it was so good that if somebody just wasn't paying attention or just missed that one little thing that you'd have thought that car had never been wrecked. So just for peace of mind's sake, if you're buying something like this, that is mint condition that you may keep for a long period of time, maybe even as an investment, I would say yes. Now I printed off a couple of copies of this and I stuck one in the owner's manual or in that paper with the owner's manual in the, in the bag. And, uh, I'm just going to leave it there. Now, future date, if I go to sell this car one day, I can show them that. Now, of course, it won't have the history that I've done to the car, but if they want to know whenever they go to buy it one day, they can do a Carfax too. But I can at least show them where I did one on it before I bought it. Like I said, is it worth the $40? Depends on how bad you want to know if the car has ever been damaged or anything like that. If the car didn't appear to or anything, I had no reason to think that. But like I said, just for peace of mind, it was worth $40 to me. So that's something you're going to have to decide for yourself. If you're buying a nice car like this off an individual, a lot of times car lots will just show you a Carfax. Or when you look it up online, you can just see the Carfax. A lot of times you can just click on it and they'll show it to you online. Well, you can't do that with an individual most of the time. So you have to buy it yourself. So only you can decide if it's worth the $40, but that's what you get with it. That's the information you get with it. And it tells you pretty much everything about the car. Are there ways to get around this? Yes, there's ways to get around everything. Um, you could have hit a tree in your yard and had your buddy Paul fix it or something, and it would never show up on a Carfax. So of course there's ways to get around it. The thing is a lot of times shade tree mechanics or auto body shops that don't have the big tools and stuff like that and the big paint boost can't get everything back perfectly. You know, they've got frame machines and stuff like that. They can pull the frame with just micrometers of where it was um, from the factory. So, you know, or I guess micrometers not been right, micro millimeters of where it would have been from the factory. And sometimes they can almost make it better, but there are ways to get around this. So it's not perfect. I want you to know that, but I do trust this pretty good because I do feel like if some shop that wasn't qualified in doing a good restoration did it, you better tell that with the naked eye by checking, you know, some of the creases and stuff like that. I'll do a video on that to kind of show you what to look for um, if you're going to buy a new car and see what lines up and what doesn't at a later date. But as for now, I would advise if you're buying something nice, go ahead and spend $40. It'll make you feel better later. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.